Ah, Veltari. You've returned from another successful mission, I take it? Ah, oh, successful as it's ever gonna be. How are friends in the Order of the Merciful Sword? Compliant now? Um, well, compliant's one way to put it. Um, if you're dead, it's a little more difficult to not obey. So some of them are compliant and some of them are compliant. <laughs> good, good. I can always count on you, Veltari. Oh, that you can, that you can. As, as long as you're giving me a nice roof and board over my head, I you can, you can count on me to... Oh, you can count on me, it's fine. I'm so glad to hear that. The next thing I have for you, I can only send someone I truly trust. I have received word from my spies that a message has appeared inside the town of Ilium. You know the one? Is this that one that no one ever comes back from? Just the one. And I have reason to believe that my old protege, he goes by the name of Victrola, may be inside. Mm, fancy, Victrola. I knew him before he was Victrola. We are... we're close. So, what, what, what am I doing? Am I going and getting him back? The only word I've received is that if this truly is Victrola, he needs help. Okay, look, this place has a bit of a bit of a habit of people not returning. That's not a problem by me, but just be aware you might not have me around if I go in there. So, y- you good with this? Because I'm I'm good. I'll do whatever, but you might not have me back for a while. I wouldn't entrust this task to you if it wasn't very personally important to me. Right, when do I set off, I suppose? Well, a person like Victrola wouldn't send a message if it weren't urgent. He is uh, non-confrontational by nature. So, the faster the better. In fact, I'll call in some favors and we can uh, perhaps get you a teleportation spell. Right, well, uh, in that case, I guess I better go grab my things. I guess you better. We may not see each other for a while, but if some day we do meet again, I'll have quite the uh, the stack of gold waiting for you, Veltari. I uh, don't think there's much chance of that, but I appreciate your positivity. Thank you. You've been good. You've been good. Thanks. One more thing, though. <laughs> what? What? If it's not Victrola who is sending this message, we cannot overlook. A deception like this. I cannot afford to be baited so easily. Well, if this isn't Victrola, whoever it is certainly won't be causing you any problems afterwards. I can assure you that much. I'm so glad we're on the same page. <laughs> I was worried I'd have to spell it out. <laughs> it's it's fine. I'll spell it out if you'd like. I'll bash him over the head with my guitar. How's that? Veltari, I expect you're going to need several guitars for all the bashing that you're going to do in there. It's a good thing that you're giving me a bunch of money for this, because I'm probably gonna gonna do some bashing. <laughs> bring him back, or bring back all the pieces of everyone who heard him. Last time, on Base Funk. Because no one else who knows who Count Danto is, it's just going to say, Count, Count Danto, help. I mean, it's gonna say, you can come in, but can't come out, because Bumbershoot can't really lie to him. It's sort of a thing. Maybe you can send someone else in to help. Uh, the pawnbroker, Penny, is requesting that we recover the salamander sheath. Apparently, it was stolen somewhat recently. How far away are we from this zombie? And if it cannot reach Theodora, it walks around Roland. I'm going to step on its head so that it stops moving. That implies that the upper body actually wasn't undead. Somebody did, did magic in here, like, really recently, guys. Um, but there actually are two spells that happened here. Be like a really large hawk or something if these were claw marks or something, you know. It's possible, or it could just be a sword. Could be a sign of a struggle. Oh, the table was bumped a little bit? I moved it back. I don't know if that's relevant. Wine. It could be saliva. Blood? I'm not sure. I'll I'll whip up a list of those, too. So you want wizards and people between giant and human-sized, right? That sounds about right so far. Do you think there might be any way... I could talk to Lady Nim? 
I think she might be the only person here who wants to get to get rid of the barrier as much as we do. If you ever need anything from me, just let me know. Can I have, like, my half of your soul? Maybe. All right, so you think about my request, I'll think about your request. (laughs) Fair, fair, fair and even. How do you guys feel about going to visit that fancy wizard? And you ask everybody, and nobody has ever heard of or seen Garrick the Great. Uh, Zoe might uh, mention everybody else uh, that she's going to stop real quick to go see Warren Light about something. All right, so you guys all gather your stuff and walk out of Tarsus and start heading over to the Sacrum, the big tower. It's very obvious. The fucker is up with all these zombies. Let's step on his head, too. Zoe casts Magic Missile. We, we got a forum of people who write fanfic for us, you know. Our listeners are so inexplicably horny. It's not even like this is a horny show that draws like-minded horny people, right? No. Like, besides the occasional F-bomb, we're, like, basically chased. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can anybody explain it? They just want to find any opening to work themselves into, and <sighs> this show presents a lot of opportunities, so. Uh, speaking of Elcor, it occurred to me the other day that we could just, like take stuff <laughs> like like we're D ostensibly but there's nothing stopping us from being like you turn a corner and there's a hand or like if we could <laughs> right i mean i mean the original D used to have ants in it and hobbit and then because of legal problems they had to change them to tree ants and halflings yeah i think we actually talked about the balrog in like episode two yeah and there's a couple of other creatures like that was like nope you can't do that that's copyrighted it's a copyrighted character yeah. Speaking of which, if anybody is listening to this, uh, like archive years from now, and you're like, "Huh, the premise of the show bears a striking resemblance to the Magic: The Gathering expansion, Amon Ket, which at time of recording came out like this week." I got there first. I just wanted to be said. It's about uh, the story of the new magic set. Is there's a city surrounded by a mysterious barrier, and the heroes are trapped inside. And there's an invincible angel, and also there's all these uh, not necessarily hostile undead that are all throughout the town. And I looked at it, and I was like, "No one's gonna believe me." <laughs> Yorski is a known precognitive genius here, so that's all that needs to be said. Check the release dates, please. (laughs) Where we were when the last episode ended was you guys encountered a second zombie just heading towards you, more specifically towards Theodora. And rather than attempt to engage with it on an intellectual level, Zoe Legrand opened fire with magic missile and put a couple of holes in it, superficial holes, uh, but at the same time triggered a wild magic consequence, which turned her into a walking stereo which blares only the greatest hits that the finest accordions can produce mm-hmm. how are you feeling about that oh that's awesome that's that's like my favorite thing <laughs> if, if, if it wasn't like tasting mayonnaise in her mouth all the time the idea that she might be constantly surrounded by polka music is just it's 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 all i ever hoped for with this character i didn't know that zoe's last name was yankovic so yeah, I was honestly trying to think of another accordion players. There's got to be one in Mumford and Sons. <laughs> yeah, an arcade fire and the Decemberists and Modest Mouse occasionally employ accordions. The question is, like, how deep a cut do we want to get in here before the zombieing? I all of a sudden only have the chicken dance and accordion stuck in my head because that's what they do at Oktoberfest. They play the chicken dance, but with only accordions. So if there's mayonnaise involved, is that the chicken salad dance? I don't know. Oh my god. I mean, I'm just saying. Jeez. The polka music is blaring and is just emitting from your body, and it is obnoxious, and I assume overwhelming to everyone around you, but the zombie does not flinch, and it continues its march towards Dora. 
All right, Zoe, you might want to cast another spell uh, promptly here. What? Maybe to maybe to maybe stop the music. Do what you might now? Wanna, you might want to <laughs> cast another spell there, Zoe. Can't crack a bell? What does that mean? Mm. <laughs> Roland is characterized almost entirely through small growls. <laughs> Uh, I imagine uh, Zoe's going to be trying to do anything she can to stop the music, like, try to see if there's, like, a trick to it at all, which I'm guessing there isn't. Like, she can't, like, just, like, I don't know, like, shut her mouth and, like, the music stops, like, it's only when her mouth's open or something like that. Yeah, it's hard to say when your magic, when your wild magic effects wear off. Sometimes it's time, sometimes another spell will do it, sometimes there's, like, a weird trigger, like, maybe one night you stub your toe and, like, suddenly, you know, something changes back. You it, you never can predict it. So I imagine you try a bunch of things, and right now, you are just a boombox. All right, since nothing she's trying right now is working, she will try, I guess, the other solution of uh, casting another spell and see if that helps it go away. <laughs> since the zombie's still coming towards us, and I assume we want it to just go away, uh, I'll cast... Uh, I think I'll just cast Magic Missile again. All right. It's worked out so well so well thus far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just think this is just going to escalate the situation. Maybe. It is going to be 10 damage. All right, so you put a bunch more holes in this zombie as it walks towards you. You can see it now. It's bleeding this like very thin, watery blood out of all these holes, and What's interesting is you've done 17 damage to it total now, and it seems to be, like, slowing down. Like, it's not making a conscious choice. It's, like, physically debilitated now as it's, like, leaking this, ver- like, very freely bleeding this stuff. Um, but in the meantime, wild magic roll again. All right. I have a good feeling about this. Six. What is six on the table? Oh, I like this one. This time... Magic missile shoots out of your hand. It does so with a peal of thunder and another and then another. And suddenly there is a dark gathering cloud above your head. Um, and you have summoned a, a budding thunderstorm above you. Uh Oh, and for everyone else who's lived in Ilium for a while, this is like the first time you've seen rain and who knows how long for Dora, like the, like she can't even remember. <sighs> Does it seem to be localized entirely above Zoe? Like, is this like a small personal rain cloud for her, or is it just like Ilium right now is like cra- uh, surrounded by like a thunderstorm? It's early in this, so you can't quite tell what's going to happen because we're like in bullet time essentially. So right now there's just a small thunderstorm above you, but like the early stages, it could get bigger. You don't know yet, but the zombie's still coming. And the poker music's still playing? Oh yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> this would be like the most complicated scene to film in the HBO miniseries. <laughs> now we also have to deal with the fact that our parade is being rained on, so <sighs> No, I love it. What she could do is she can cast a spell, but not one of her spell slot spells. I think what she'll do is she'll cast Firebolt instead. Which is a regular spell that, uh, cantrip, which I think only does wild magic when she's under, like, severe emotional duress. Which I, I wouldn't say she's particularly under right now. Maybe that will change things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can center yourself and try to get off a, a nice, clear shot. Yeah, she's, uh, she's really, she's really grooving out to this polka music. It's pretty lit right now, so she reaches her zen point and she'll, uh, fire, uh, fire bolt at the zombie. 25 to hit. Hell yeah. 11 fire damage. So you've done 28 damage to it now. You, the fire bolt hits it like square in the chest and just like explodes all over its like front and torso and face and badly burns it. Like the skin is gone. You see like the bits of muscle and skull and it's, it's barely moving now. Like it's trying, but you've, you've wrecked its scene pretty badly. It looks like it, it, a strong wind would blow it over. I like your, your, your choice of words though, Austin, where you said a strong wind could knock it over. Oh, <laughs> I did not. I just so happened to have a strong wind that could knock it over. Okay. So Zoe then, to to finish off this coup de grace, will cast Gust and try to just blast the zombie into bones and, I don't know, the other things that zombies are made out of. Five. That is mm. not going to do it. I'd like to characterize this as a, like a large tuba blast. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you throw in throw in some uh brass in with the polka and now it's like ska or something. <laughs> I don't know how ska works. Um this is like a YouTube video of someone who's walking in a hurricane and their umbrella gets <laughs> like turned right the heck inside out. It's very bad. You just blast this dude ass over tea kettle. Mm. I, I said dude, this is a female zombie, but yep. uh it breaks like all its arms and legs before coming to a rest at the end of your gust. Um, perception check, everybody. As Zoe single-handedly reduces this thing to a charred, twisted wreck. Got it. Eight from uh, Roland. Seventeen. Eighteen. Oh. All right, seventeen and eighteen. You guys all see this zombie on the ground. Its arms and legs broken. Its face burned off. Its clothes charred. And as the watery liquid uh, continues to run out of the magic missile holes. You notice it flows with a consistency that you find disconcerting. Uh, you rolled 17 and 18. What I'm trying to say specifically is that it, it's not as if it is bleeding naturally with gravity. It is like whatever is inside is leaving. Mm. And I realize that's super ambiguous. Mm. Roll higher next time. <laughs> <laughs> Roland is going to go up to the the corpse as it <laughs> and um he's going to try to investigate the liquid that's coming out and just sort of try to see, figure out what is this yeah i mean you uh, you walk over because you didn't see this so they're trying to explain it to you yeah and as you go over to investigate uh like the last of it l- it leaves out of the holes and like flows down into the ground and like you like kneel down oh, i'm gonna check this stuff and it's like mm-hmm. gone what what is this? No, I'm not going to quote. <laughs> Chris's blood? This is nothing like Chris's blood. It's not. Given that she was rattled right down to her skeleton, um, <laughs> I'm noticing that there's just no blood, nothing else. How Can I use something to figure out how long this body's been dead for, using like medicine, perhaps, or investigation? Yeah, maybe instead of burning this one, check it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, medicine. Medicine, you got it. 18. That's very good. This thing is desiccated. Right. Like, this person died in a desert. <laughs> like, there's no liquid in this body. Right. Okay, so my my suspicion is that this zombie came from outside of Ilium and then came back in, because it doesn't seem likely that a corpse from inside of Ilium to be this dry. It sure is curious. The only other thing I can do is check the clothes that are on it in any way and just See if I could determine if they might if it if the clothes that seem to belong in any of the surrounding regions outside of Ilium, to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, so both zombies you've seen so far, the first male and the second female, have been nice. Uh, these ones are burned, obviously, mm. but they're nice, is what I would say. It's not like oh, this is the ceremonial dress of this clan or something. You're just like oh, these are nice clothes, just kind of generic on this continent. And the clothes seem to be roughed up burned and such but not like they were completely tattered when they showed up yeah actually they're probably pretty nice before they showed up that's that's the this isn't a coincidence both were conspicuously and connectedly nice interesting interesting this whole thing's getting more curious and we haven't even had a chance to talk to one of them really maybe that would be a good idea next time hmm that's two of them so far today are you sure you don't have some secret undead fan club that's decided to have a convention here not that i know of um i would say maybe it was gany trying to send a message but he can just kind of do that anyway why would he need to send zombies um so i don't know maybe maybe we really should talk to the next one i'll just like walk up to it and then if it tries to strangle me or something just kill it i guess don't worry i'll have your back if something weird happens like that thanks and then Roland looks over to uh, to Zoe, who got solo XPs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, solo solo XPs and at free built in victory music. So <laughs> you're ten feet away from everybody. She is, so they can talk. She she stepped away. It's like that uh, scene in Logan where Professor X is just like going through the casino, like I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Spoilers. I haven't seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you guys do? So no blasting the next one we see. Yes, no blasting the next one. Got it! Roland, like, takes out some uh, things of dressing for wounds and such, and sort of stuffs them in his ears. <laughs> Let's just go to the warden. Maybe he 
might have something that can help us with this. Yeah, sure. Aww. And she's going to, like, clasp her hands over her ears and walk along, which, to fit this image perfectly, I hope the small rain cloud is following directly above her to just fit this image of, like, the personal rain cloud she now has over top of her. I mean, absolutely, except for the word small. Uh-oh. It's getting bigger. ruh Uh, But you definitely have a personal thunderstorm following you. It's getting uh, louder in the thunder peals and more aggressive with the, the lightning inside of it. Uh, and the cloud itself is getting bigger and the rain is coming down harder on, on you. Okay, great. <laughs> but as it gets bigger, a larger radius around you as well. All right, so here's something. Zoe's going to cast Message, which is one of her cantrips, and use this to talk to Roland, which is going to be easier without the polka music and rainstorm affecting her conversation. Very thoughtful, yeah. And she's basically going to ask, does the warden ever leave? Like, could he leave to talk to us? Because I feel like this is going to be really disruptive and I'm going to get rain all over his church. You've never seen him leave the sacrum, but you have no reason to believe he can't. I've never seen the warden outside of the sacrum, but I think he'll be able to manage. He can tolerate chaos if it's unintentional like this. All right. I don't feel bad, though. I think the fact that you feel bad will make him more sympathetic. While they're having their secret convo, I'm doing a boogie on the way to the polka music. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, what the heck's the context for that? All right, cool. So you're t- you're you're not shook by the zombies, Dora? Is that what's happening? I'm. I mean, she's concerned, but she's not like super super worried because it's not like she's on. Her- if she was alone, then she'd be terrified. But she's not alone. She has people on, like who have her back, so she's not like super scared. Just like more like mm. Metal Dad and the Magic Missile Machine Gun <laughs> are pretty good companions. All right, so you guys make your way to the big white tower in the center of town. Nothing appears to be going on there. It's just sitting silently and austerely, like an old church. You guys walk in, uh, and on the other side of the room, you see Warden Light at his pulpit. He's actually polishing like a mirror. You see, he has he has balanced on top of it, and he's just like dutifully kind of just making uh, circles with a rag. And he's just just working away, and he he sees you guys come in. And he says, "The avant guards, how are you this fine day?" Did the did the storm cloud follow Zoe into the sacrum? Uh so it's following above her at a certain point. So it like hit like she walked in, and it was too high for the door. So. You, act, I mean, she loses sight of it as she goes inside. You don't know what it's doing out there. Okay, good. I was, like, wondering how localized is all this. Okay. It's following above her, like, in the sky where thunder where thunder clouds belong, <laughs> usually. Uh, so it's pretty high up there, but it's only really f- following her. Um, but when you do walk in, blasting uh, that top 40 good accordion jam, mm-hmm. <laughs> Warden Light does look, after greeting you, he kind of uh, cocks his head like a very confused dog and says, brothers and sisters, is that intentional? I, from Sister Legrand's face, it seems this may be an affliction from which, for which you require relief. Uh, like, right now, like, her hands are, like, over her ears, <laughs> and she's just kind of, like, try, I think, like, with, like, a spare time, trying to, like, wring rain out of her fucking, like, her hair and everything, so she's just kind of looking at him, like, what did he say? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, Warden Light casts silence in the corner of the of the room so there's like a sphere of silence if you want to stand inside it to not be obnoxious you can oh yeah (laughs) she will so (laughs) she's like thanks she like walks over with like the like the wettest footsteps there are (laughs) like swap swap oh she's in time out (sighs) oh once once she's in the sphere of silence in the quiet shame bubble uh roland pulls the cotton out of his ears and just lets out a soft sigh (sighs) wild magic can be a a strange thing to witness the world is full of many puzzling mysteries indeed it is including the mystery of a person who both seems to exist and doesn't exist at the same time (sighs) have you brought me a riddle brother hawklight not perhaps a riddle but at least a conundrum uh i apologize if it's not up to your uh to your tastes, but one thing that we 
came across in recent days that was strange, it was actually during our assignment, was a peculiar-looking uh, wizard, at least as he claimed himself to be, uh, at the Hawthorne's party. However, after inquiring about, it seems no one, aside from us, have any recollection of this person, not even of whether he even appeared in town in the first place. His name is Garrick, and he's really snooty. Uh, so what do you require from me, then? I don't... I'm not familiar with this person. That's what I was suspecting. We are on assignment to someone else in town to uh, retrieve an item that was stolen, and we're merely just trying to find information that might be relevant to the case, including any potential wizards who might have been the potential perpetrators. Of course, if truly committed a crime worthy of your judgment, uh, we'll be sure to send them along to you properly. I have full faith and confidence in you, Brother Hawklight. Uh, theft may not be the gravest of crimes, but everyone must atone for what they do in this life. Indeed they must. Another puzzling thing that's been happening lately, uh, as far as today, have you been aware of the presence of Walking Dead? Uh, you're going to have to be more specific. Unfortunately, Ilium has come under something of a siege between the recent emergence of the uh, specters above us and also the renewed prominence of our skeletal friends over near the Hawthorne estate. Hmm. A lot of the uneasy dead these days, it appears. These appear to be a bit different than either of those. They shamble, they are fleshy, they appear desiccated as if they had perished in the desert, and, at least according to what we can see, they don't bleed blood or any natural-looking liquid, for that matter, but some other type of fluid that, as far as we can tell, moves on its own accord. And they're very moist, and yet not moist at the same time. Indeed. <laughs> Sister Theodora... I don't suspect you sincerely believe that that clarified <laughs> the situation. Also, they're after me. Af after you, you say. Now that is more helpful information. They're doing me a startle. <laughs> is there any way to determine maybe there is something about Dora at the moment that is drawing these creatures towards her? Well, uh, dark omens follow dark deeds, Theodora. Is there perhaps uh, something that you would like to share with the rest of us, Sister Theodora? I don't think so. I haven't done anything particularly evil that I can remember, and I feel like I would remember. <laughs> um, I opened the box of ghosts. I can't imagine it's a coincidence, so maybe you should look deep inside yourself and question uh, your role in all of this. Okay, I guess... I think you'll often find in matters of divine mystery, we carry the answer within us all along. Yeah, sure. <laughs> totally. Zoe, you're still in your timeout bubble. What's up? Yeah, uh, well, I think if uh, the conversation seems to be dwindling down, she might try to call the warden over to her. Uh, so you're just going to wave him over to you? Well, actually, that's a, that's a good test. If she like sticks her head outside of the bubble, does the polka music start again? <laughs> Probably less. Like, it's like surface area of zombies. Uh, <laughs> so there's just <laughs> just part of it from her head region. So this is like some Mumford & Sons ambient music right now, basically. <laughs> uh, are we going to make just a bunch of Mumford & Sons references just throughout? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find a way to fit a little Lion Man pun in there, but it's just not coming to me yet. Uh, yeah, I think she'll come out and she'll like point to him and do a message and basically say, uh, Warden, could I speak to you for a quick second? Of course, Sister Legrand. How can I? How can I help? I have a question for you pertaining to the soul. Uh, of course, that's uh, one of my areas of expertise. Ask away. I thought so. So you know of the um shard of myself that broke off and is with the the lilies now, right? Of uh, yes, I am aware of uh the littlest Legrand. So she says she has part of my soul. Is that right? My understanding is that she was born from a, a small part of you. Semantically, perhaps, yeah. That does not sound impossible. 
So the whole thing with souls is like, as long as I have ownership of my soul, when I die, I go to whatever afterlife is right for me, right? Yep. Correct. What happens if part of my soul is missing then? That's a a very good question. Uh, I would imagine that your eternal reward would only be partially fulfilling since you would not be able to experience its fullness. Oh. Huh. Can I ask you then a hypothetical question? You can certainly try. She thinks that she should have half of my soul because she's half of me. Do you think that's right? I'm no mathematician, (laughs) Sister Legrand. I think perhaps this is more of a, a matter of the heart, which cannot so easily be quantified, unfortunately. Uh, what feels right to you? 50-50? 40-60? Uh, what lets you sleep at night? Oh, with the polka music, I don't think I'm going to be getting a lot of sleep, actually. So, Yeah, point taken. Uh, I guess I'll have to think about it. Well, it looks like Zoe's just trying not to be a hopeless wanderer or something here. <laughs> <laughs> we... If only all of our quandaries could be solved with equations, there would be no need for people like me. We could all we could all pop down to our local college and have all the our soulful matters calculated for us. Wouldn't that be a relief? It'd make things easier. All right. Well, thanks for the help. I fear that I may not have been helpful. Is there something you all seem very troubled and it's troubling me? Feel free to unburden yourselves. This town is stinky. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sister Legrand. Thank you for that. I'm going to go back in my silent bubble now. Oh. I think the situation here is just that things are simply becoming more confusing, and there's not much clarity to be had. Think of it this way. Every moment of suffering is an opportunity for growth. That is the blessing that Ilmater conveys to us through all of our struggles. Indeed it is, even if that suffering is simply through confusion. (laughs) Yeah. Well, Warden Light, I think we shall leave you to your work here. If something does come up, we'll be sure to contact you with uh, any additional details. Understood, Brother Hawklight. And remember, do not be afraid to rely on your faith and not so much your intellect and intuition. They can be confused and led astray. While faith does not require concrete answers, it simply is. And that is, in these trying times, very comforting, you will find. Comfort for myself is hardly a prize worth worth seeking. If there are others that are troubled, trapped, or seeking help, and I'm not there to provide them aid. Selfless as always. Dora's, like, really resisting the urge to, like, mock the warden. <laughs> like, to the little, like, hand thing where she's like, meh, 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 meh. Nice. But she's scared of him, so she doesn't do it. Um. So as you guys leave, uh, Warden Light actually says uh, to Bumbershoot, who has remained silent this whole time, being uncomfortable in Warden Light's presence, he says, Oh, Brother Victrola, uh, may I speak with you a moment? What? (laughs) Uh, The rest of you go on ahead. Uh, I need to speak with Victrola alone. And uh, I'm (laughs) I'm sure that's uh, disconcerting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bumbershoot just sort of like uh, walks hesitantly towards him. I'll see you later. Uh, Thanks for your help earlier, Bumbershoot. Zoe! (laughs) Zoe! He, like, waves his hands at the silence bubble to motion that they're they're leaving. She'll pop out, and as she's, like, leaving, she's gonna say, Sorry for any water I tracked inside! (laughs) He he can uh, clean up the floor with a wave of the hand. It's it's no problem at all, Sister Legrand. Dora's gonna look at Bumbles and go, Ooh, you're in trouble! (laughs) Alright, so, uh... Most of the team leaves the sacrum. Uh, what are you guys going to do next? I need to have a conversation in my own mind for a moment. Mm-hmm. There's only one way out of this. Do you want some thinking music? <laughs> I, I, I think I'll manage just fine. I just need a white blank page in my 
book here to work off of. Uh, here we go. And pineapple. Hey, it's your boy, Winifred. Back with some scoops. What's up? Oh, I'm hoping you have some scoops here because we've been, things have been a bit stormy and cloudy out here, as you probably have heard. I'm sure that's a really good joke on your end. It doesn't mean anything to me. Right, right. So, you have some names for us? Of course. What do you think I've been doing over here? Well, feel free to list them off in any particular order you have. All right. Uh, so, Winifred gives you uh, a couple names of wizards in town and a couple of names of people who are between the size of humans and giants. Mm. And we don't, we're not going to go to every single one of them. Mm -hmm. There's probably like a montage of you guys knocking on doors and like silent conversations with jaunty montage music over them. Um, but two that we're going to zoom in on, I will let you know now their details and you can choose where you want to go first alphabetically. The first one is a wizard, or rather a witch, named Sylvia Bell. And the other one is a troll named Wolf, W-U-L-F. Hmm. And then tells you where these people live. Now we're getting to L.A. Noir territory here. Yep. I, you got, so I had to make these both up <laughs> because you asked for a, a wizard and a, a sized person. So now I gave you one of each, and we'll see where it goes. The witch's name again, just because I was writing this down. Yep. Sylvia Bell. And the other character, uh, the... Wolf. Wolf. Got it. All right. Well, uh, Polka's still playing, right? Yeah, of course. We got our investigation music happening in full blast here. Thank you very much for that. Fred? No problem. That's what I'm here for. If, we, if anything else comes up, we'll be sure to contact you. And uh, let's just roll in, over, and out. All right, have a good investigation. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Jesus, music. <laughs> and the cloud, the thunderstorm keeps getting bigger, too, by the way. I'm sorry. I don't know <laughs> if it ends or what. Are you sorry, though? Because I feel like you saw the opportunity to start stacking these. <laughs> and you took it. She doesn't know how to stop them, so sometimes you gotta do a little experimentation. Well, hopefully we can find some answers after this storm is done here. What did Winnie tell you? Just a list of names of persons who might be of interest for us. Who dat? <laughs> uh, two that stand out. We have a witch. Her name is Sylvia Bell. Another one's the a, a person who fits in the larger than a human, smaller than a bread box category <laughs> by the name of Wolf. I don't know how you could be larger than a human and smaller than a bread box, but let's assume that that is answered during the montage of non non important interviews. <laughs> it's a giant's bread box. That's why. Oh, ah. mystery solved. Mystery solved. So I think let's take care of this one, Wolf, first. Oh, okay. <laughs> why that? Because Dora thinks the witch sounds cuter. <laughs> then you're racist. saving the best for last, then. Okay, harumph. She crosses her arms and pouts. We, we're start head we'll start heading over to where Wolf is, I guess. All right, so you guys know that Wolf lives... He lives actually up against the barrier, basically, at a certain point. Mm -hmm. uh, more specifically, where there used to be, like, a small stream that has been cut off when when the barrier happened. And so it's kind of pooled, where instead of there's, like, a flow out, it's just there's, like, a small stagnant unpleasant patch at the bottom of a hill and uh you see as you kind of approach this area you can see right away wolf the troll uh out in this patch with a shovel and he seems to be doing something out in this like gross like there's mosquitoes and stuff not bad because there's not an entire ecosystem to support them but there's just like a little inbred mosquito family that hangs out in just this one gross area and there's like no structure like, there's no house here. Mm. It seems like Wolf might just live at the bottom of this gross hill. The couple notable features, trolls are, like, nine feet tall, so they could pick you up and maybe, like, break some ribs of yours with, like, their bare hands, but they can't reduce you to jelly like a giant can. Right. So they're very strong, very big. They're very hunched over as well. Just uh, They have, like, kind of big gorilla arms, and it messes up their posture. They also have kind of an unpleasant complexion, like a green, like, wartiness, which is pretty common, and a kind of stringy black hair. They're, by most conventional, like, beauty standards, considered pretty ugly. You could you could have a 
troll thing if you want. <laughs> That's just mm-hmm. the lore I'm given. Uh, some notable features about Wolf in particular. He has this shovel. He's also wearing um, a scarf, which is like weirdly nice, like a cashmere scarf that doesn't go with anything else on him. Like he's like wearing like ratty sack as like abdomen clothes and just like in this gross field. He has a really nice scarf. And then you can see um, under that there's like peeking out the bottom of some sort of like amulet that he's also wearing. So that's like the notable accessories going on with this this troll. Roland's going to glance to Dora do you want to start this, or do you want me to start this? I'll start it. All right. Hey, bro, nice scarf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, damn, I have to get a voice for this fool, huh? Hey, don't bro me if you don't know me. Fair, fair enough. <laughs> Just saying, that's a very nice scarf you have on there. I know, that's why I'm wearing it. Another fair point. He shakes his, like, muddy shovel at you and, like, splatters mud in your general direction. And you're wearing, like, very nice designer clothes. And this seems like an intentional provocation. Y'all just come to laugh at me? Is that what this is? Just gonna gang up on me? Three to one? No. No. We just had some questions for you. Also, please don't get mud on my clothes. Y'all the popo. Get out of here. I ain't snitching. I ain't no popo. That's what a popo would say. What if I, uh, would you talk to us if I gave you, uh, free crabs? You can't bribe me. A nice outfit to mask your scarf? I ain't narking. You can't buy me. I can. You can't buy me, policeman. I'm not a police. He's just waving his shovel at this point. There's just mud going everywhere. He's like, the policeman brought a cloud. There's music. I, this is all this is hanky. Get out of here. You're a hanky. I'm sorry. Roll it. I tap out. <laughs> uh wolf just scoops up like a ball of mud and chucks it at you as you try to tag out um he has like huge scary claws like trolls are very physically imposing mm-hmm. although this guy is kind of a goofus mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, i guess uh i'm just gonna roll shit i'm just i'm gonna throw mud at you uh, let's see who hits rolling or uh eight no it misses wildly come on come on now wolf is there's there's no reason to to get riled up here. I don't want to interfere with your... You smell like a fed. You fed? I had a good breakfast this morning, yes. <laughs> What's it to you? Damn it. <laughs> Skitch is forcing me to up my game. What do you? What do y'all want? I just want some answers, and then we'll be on our way. Y'all want something. Mm, that is true. Rather, it's not us that wants something. It's one penny that wants something, something back, something that might have been procured from the pawn shop that the lilies run. Penny, I told you, you can't bribe me. But, um, it's, <laughs> it's going to take more than a penny, at least. <laughs> well, here's a penny for your thoughts, then. <laughs> this is so self-indulgent. This is, this is. Roland just sort of like says, now, I don't suspect that you're the type to find any need for, let's say, a sheath for a sword or something of that type. Am I right? What do I do with a sword? I'll cut your sword in half. Like, and I take you're not in the market for something to keep those fine, sharp claws of yours nice and protected, you know, when you're dealing with whatever you're digging up here. What's that supposed to mean? Man can't put in an honest day's work? Why am I a prospector? I thought I was a farmer. What's happening to my voice? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyway the only thing I have to ask in this, don't take this either way that's a mighty fine scarf you have there do you mind me asking how you got it you ask away so how did you get it I I take the Ilium 5th oh, oh so I'm free to ask questions and you're free not to answer them I see how where this is going to be we can do this in a way that allows me to make sure that nobody comes after you because we both know that would be bad news if the Lilies decided to actually act on something they feel is a threat. And I do not want that to happen to anyone in this town. You can't threaten me, pig. Bring it. I am death. Come on. I thought your name was Wolf, but... He raises the shovel as if to say, if you want to step, he will wang you with it. No wanging! 
<laughs> Please no wang. <laughs> Please no wanging, everyone. <laughs> uh, Roland just sort of like uh, lifts his amulet for a moment, mutters something, and then uh, casts Zone of Truth for a moment here. Okay, so I have to do a wisdom saving throw? Yep. Wolf is not particularly scholarly. But he might roll well. 11. That does not beat the save DC of 15. I feel tingly now. You, what are you, you going to done something now? Listen, I just want answers. And when those answers are received, then you'll be back to working on your patch of land here. Nice and safe. Oh, you want answers. Well, I, I told you, we all want something. I want friends. I mean, I, that's not what I meant. Shut up. Having some friends would help out with tending the... the I said shut up. The field here, wouldn't it? Guy here. So where did you get that scarf? Very nice. I might want to get one for myself. You know, my neck could use a little bit of a, something to add some flair, you see. Uh, I see how it is. You done sorceled me. I, I eat enough wizards in my time. I know how it goes. I mean, you're not suggesting that you got one from a wizard or something. Wolf, I'll make you a fancy outfit to go with your scarf. Is there a miscommunication vis-a-vis bribery that is not <laughs> getting communicated? I'm just persistent. Uh, the only other thing I think of is there's someone in town that you wanted to be friends with. You didn't hear that. That that was sorcer- That was sorcery talking. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, but my ears are working fine despite the music happening over there. Sorry. <laughs> are you though? Mostly. <laughs> Do you want me to water your crops? <laughs> Everyone here wants something. I want some answers. You want friends. That's completely fine. I'm not judging you. I don't have any friends in this town either, really. Rude! Ouch! Whoa! All right, fine. <laughs> oh, dang, you done sorcelled yourself! <laughs> At least not like the friends I used to have before I came here. He just... <laughs> Wolf thinks you zone a truth to yourself and accidentally revealed something like he did. <laughs> no. <laughs> so so here's the thing, Wolf. If you ne- If you want friends, there's ways... That can happen. That's not a. This is not a difficult thing here we're dealing with. I'm not an idiot. I know y'all thinking, oh, the ugly boy doing all his turnips. He don't know nothing. I know. You come over here, you gonna laugh at me? You think I'm in a position to make fun of someone's appearance? Uh, you look like a m- mighty fine, handsome boy to me. <laughs> well, I appreciate the compliments, but I can assure you that insulting someone's appearance is the last thing I'd want to do while I'm here. Why do you think we're here to laugh at you, Wolf? Because everybody does. Are we laughing? Look at us. No laughing. I think you were literally just laughing. <laughs> Not. Shut up. I don't say that. Wolf, look Look at you. With your crops. Look at me with my crabs. We could, we could run a fine catering business together. Think about it. She's not in the zone of truth, so this is... <laughs> <laughs> I ain't interested in your money. It look, fine. I listen. I stole it. Okay, you happy? Try to take me in. Do it. I dare you. I stole it. Fight me. I ain't mad at it. <laughs> well, 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 well. L- listen, listen, listen. You stole the scarf. Yeah. Is that not what we're talking about? Yes, but from who? I mean, what did the person look like? Uh, a dwarf. Real, real little. Uh, no, no reach at all. I pushed him away. Couldn't even get to me. Tiny arms. Huh. Interesting. I mean, I mean, it was interesting, and then there was the mob, and they had torches, and that was bad. And then I ran away, and then I was like, I'm gonna hide in the rainbow. And then you found yourself in here. That's about the size of it. Well, sounds pretty clear. Advice from me to you, do not hide in the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's several others who probably feel the same way once they arrived here. Nothing but turnips. <laughs> if you want to work on getting some friends, pretty sure you know how to find us. We can talk about that some other time. But I will leave you to your field for now, Wolf. All right? All right. I know where you I know where you gotta live. Popo. I see you. Uh, that's not the worst thing I've been called lately. <laughs> You know where to find me, Wolf, if you need want some nicer duds. I dig your I dig the cut of your jib. 
I mean, I'm styling. I got my scarf. I got my my necklace. And profiling. I watered your garden unintentionally, but you're welcome. <laughs> As you say that, there is just a, a bolt of lightning that comes down and just like strikes the ground, like the top of a hill, like a, a bit away, and everyone is like pretty majorly startled by it. And the thunderstorm just keeps getting like darker and angrier above you. I got a bad feeling about this, guys. Y'all weird. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. You didn't see anything weird happen over by uh, by the Lily's place recently, like people sneaking around or jumping in and out. I doubt you. Do you have even a clear line of sight of them from here? Nah, I ain't go over there, man. They'll boy, they'll boy you, you in your own soup. That they will. That they will. Well, we should need to talk to you further, but if anything comes up from your end that you need help with, don't hesitate to let us know. All right. I'm not talking to you fools without a lawyer. Good luck finding a lawyer around here. I'll get a skeleton. What would that do? I mean, he can bone up on it. He can bone up on that law. I get it. I'm pretty sure they'll draw up a, uh, some papers, trim all the fat, and make sure that they're bleached nice and clean. But No, listen, we can't, we can't, be, this kind, we can't be this kind of show. This can't be us. I, I know. So let's keep going. Let's move on. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything they want to say or do with this character before you guys peace out? It's time for us. It's time for us to go ring the bell as, and uh, Jesus, see if it gets it give us any insight. I'm gonna have to start giving people just like the blandest names that no puns can be created from. All right, so you go over to where you've been told Sylvia Bell lives, um, which is just like the closest something in Ilium gets to the suburbs. There's just like a, it's just where a couple of houses are, it's like the most residential area, and it's a very small building from the outside. It looks like it might just be like one or two rooms, like very modest. And as you guys approach the door, you don't even get a chance to knock first, and you hear a voice inside say, "Come in." Roland shrugs, opens the door, and takes a look inside. Um. So the first thing you notice when you look inside is that. This is not a one or two room small residential house inside. It is actually pretty big in here. Impossibly big. Magically big. Hmm. And you hear the sounds of like clattering and clanking from another room uh, that this house uh, inexplicably has. It get, You get the feeling this is kind of like Hawthorne house size on the inside. Hmm. So like magic has done something in here. And you hear the, a voice from further in say... I hope you guys like soup. I made two kinds. I made a uh, vegetarian and I made like a chili. Is that fine? What do you guys want? I want the chili. Hell yeah. Chili does sound really good right now. Um, you Once again, as you like enter the door, your cloud is above the house raining down on it. So you don't bring that inside with you, although you are moist and cacophonous. Um, and as you bring that noise into the house, you hear the voice from the other room say, what the hell is that racket? Sorry. It's a walking polkestra over here, I know. So, we'll just have to... It's just a little bit of wild magic, after effects. <laughs> Nothing too strange here. So, you guys walk through, like, the entranceway, and then there's, like, a living room, and you're just kind of going to where the sound of the voice is coming from. It's, like, really nice in here, in the sense that, like, somebody did something magically to make it nice, but it isn't, like sterile like there's like dirty clothes on the floor and there's like books left out on the tables and like you guys can smell food and there's it's just like very lived in mm. um and so as you go like deeper into the house in, in the kitchen you see the source of the voice uh the woman you assume is sylvia bell and she has a kind of grayish skin and um as you walk in i don't know if you immediately know what race she is she looks fairly humanoid she's wearing like an apron I would say she's like plus sized and she, she's actually like, as you walk in, like waving a wand, just like a little like wooden wand out of her hair, like changing it from colors. She's like blue, no, pink, no. And she's just like flipping through different hair colors waiting for you guys. Um, and she like the first thing you notice besides the fact that she has like weird gray skin is that she has like a lot of body modifications I don't know if this would mean anything lore wise to anyone but Sketch, maybe, mm. but she has like a lot of like piercings, um, like a lot of piercings everywhere. So not like the face, like mm. arms and stuff, like stuff that wouldn't normally be pierced. Do you know where I'm going with this? Yeah, I think I know exactly where you're going with this. 
this speaks to me that she, that there that she's a Shadar Kai, right? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, which is, and I try to keep these lore yep. dumps brief, but the shortest version is the prime material plane where most Dungeons and Dragons campaigns take place is like the kind of generic world, which is dominated by humans. And then there's two parallel worlds, the Feywild, where the dominant species is the Eladrin, kind of like the super elves. Mm -hmm. And then the other parallel universe is the Shadowfell. Mm -hmm. And the dominant species there is the Shadar Kai, yeah. which is these creatures. And so they, they're like inherently dark, but not inherently evil. So they have right. like some command over like shadows and shadow magic and death. And they have socially, culturally, like strong belief in body modification so there there's like ritual scarification and piercing and stuff that's part of their culture yeah so like this to to you and to like listeners slash viewers is to be like oh this is like a really like goth girl or something but like from from where she's from she's like a total like normal person <laughs> yeah 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 it's it's not a fashion statement that's just what they do i take it your sylvia bell correct that's me, Sylvia Bell, illusionist, witch, chef. What's up? Uh, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Hierophant and fortune and high priestess, right? What? I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not much of a card reader myself. That might require a bit more of a translation. But is there only three of you? I thought there was also going to be devil and tower. Huh? It's. I mean, it's. It's fine. It's like it, You know, things change. I just thought there were going to be five of you, and there's three. Hmm. Do you lose? Are you? Are you missing? What's going on? Well, one of our our other partner is currently occupied elsewhere. So, <laughs> hopefully, he's devil because tower is not good news. Uh, the rest of you seem like you're probably going to have good days, though. Really? <laughs> I mean, you're very loud, but it's not. Uh, I'm not. It's not malicious. I, it was all. It looked good when I checked this morning. Which one am I? I f I'm feeling high priestess vibes off of you. Sweet. Are you religious? Oh, you know it. Okay, yeah, that that checks out. So the cards told you of our arrival. Uh, I I dabble. I I I, I tell you know on the resume I put illusionist. I mean you can look around. I I've, I've spruced the place up a little bit. Some of this is uh. uh structurally physically improbable in here hmm. but I've, I've made us uh, like a little pocket space how is it roomy very cozy nice all right come on goofuses let's eat okay i'll have some of the vegetarian soup by the way just so it <laughs> doesn't go cold all right so she makes you guys all some soup and puts it out on the table and then she like spins a chair backwards and sits at it like at the table with you and she has a bowl of both and she's like so uh I think this is going to go pretty good. I don't really know what it's about, but do you understand? Do you know why we're here? It's hard to say. It's not. It's not fixed, you know. But hmm. this is like a an important crossroads for us. I don't know where it's going to go, but something's going to happen here. To put it bluntly, there's been a robbery in town, and we're trying to understand a little bit of what caused it to occur and who's responsible, and resolve it as cleanly as possible oh cool does that mean i'm gonna lead you to it <gasps> am i like the secret breakthrough nice nice i'm the key i'm the key i feel it oh this is good this is good mm. and she starts like uh like clapping like excitedly and you when you see when she does that she actually has um like up on her forearm like a bandage around her upper like forearm that you didn't see before because it was like up in her sleeve before she was like clapping enthusiastically <laughs> hopefully you didn't burn yourself while cooking there <laughs> no, I would have to get pretty uh like weirdly close to the burner for that. That's <laughs> that's uh, a weird thing to say, Hierophant. What happened? Uh oof. I tried to illusion some things. It's hmm it's a long story. You've taken the time to make a, a lovely meal. I'm sure we can take some of our time to listen to a, a fine story. Oh, do you think it's <gasps> do you think it's the key? Is it the secret? Is it the in secret ingredient? It might be. I'm sorry. Can you speak up? <laughs> yes. It might be. <laughs> Chili's good, by the way. You're at the far end of the table, and she like waves her wand and like elongates the table <laughs> to push you like farther away. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Poor Zoe. I can't believe you keep getting the negative ones. There's good ones on here. I promise. Oh, Christ on among us. She says, yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things uh, illusion magic can do is make fake things look real and real things look fake and solid things less solid and less solid things solid. And uh, I, oof, this is going to sound real dumb. I tried to make uh, some of the ghosts uh, uh, petable because they looked fluffy and uh, mm, mm, they didn't like it. S- startled them. Oh, that's really cute, though. Uh, Roll zero roll insight just to kind of see how honest her story sounds so far. Mm-hmm. 20. 20, very good. Uh, she's she's telling the basic truth about this. She did magic. Mm. It had to do with the ghosts. It hurt her. You think maybe she's there's a little bit more? It's not like it's untruth. It's just like uh, omission, maybe. Where 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 did you try to pet them? I mean, not not location on the ghosts. <laughs> I mean, got got to get that belly. I mean, within Ilium. I mean, you weren't trying to do it around your own house, I suspect. I mean, there don't seem to be any ghosts in here. No, I was over, uh, over by Tarsus because I don't know something about that place. There's a lot of like magic, and they seem like they're they they're drawn to it. And also, it's there's a lot of it, so it's a pretty good source. You got <laughs> making ghosts tangible takes a lot of effort. So having magical items or other things that emit magic seems to draw the ghosts closer. Uh, I mean, it depends on the ghost, right? They all have preferences. Sometimes they want to go towards sound or towards light or away from sound or away from light. Uh, a lot of them are drawn to magic. Hmm. So and I, a lot of the powerful ones, which was my mistake because drakes do not like belly scritches. A drake ghost? Yeah. So I don't think it's from here, which is weird. And then I thought about it. And I think, like, not all the ghosts died here. I think some of the ghosts died somewhere else and were, like, on their way to the afterlife and, like, accidentally went through the Aurora. Mm. And now they're stuck. Right, right. That would make sense. So there's, like, a weird chop suey of ghosts in here from, like, every species and every climate. And, like, it keeps getting worse because every day things die. Yes. And... you never know what angle of approach they take to get out of this place, you know? Oh, I've had many thoughts ever since the ghosts have come out. It makes me feel like Ilium is possibly worse than any prison that a person could be thrown into. Because at least when you die in a prison, your 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 spirit can escape. In this town, there is no escape. Yeah, I mean, it's it's bleak sometimes, but I mean... <clears throat> I'm from the Shadowfell, right? So it's not that it's it's a little homey, in fact, actually. I want to cast message, and I want to basically ask her, like, so I'm gonna say you could say this out loud. I'm only doing this because I don't think you could otherwise understand me. <laughs> but uh, is that all you did when you were at Tarsus, or did you do anything else when you were around there, or did you see anything else? Uh, she responds in message, just like playfully, almost. It's not like conspiratorially. She just says. I tried out for the lilies, but they didn't want me, so I don't really go in there. It's kind of awkward. So you haven't been... She was referring more to, like, when she was talking about going to scratch our pet ghosts at near the Tarsus. Yeah. She was just in the area. She wasn't, like, okay. on the building or anything. Okay. When you are there, when you were there, did you see anybody acting suspiciously? Oh, you think this is a clue? I like clues. Me too. Um, let me think. Suspiciously, suspiciously. I can't really think of anything. Uh, the only other people I saw was uh, Blood Mountain was playing fetch with his pets, uh, like in a field over. He was the only person I remember seeing over there. Okay. Uh, how also have you seen any weird zombies lately? Zomb? Not skeletons. Not skeletons. Uh, moist, gross flesh. Haven't seen any moist, damp fleshes. Okay. Just skeletons and ghosts. I did not try to pet the skeletons. I don't think they'd like it. Okay. Noted. This is a weird question. Could I use detect magic to see if, like, any of the magic, like, traces look the same? Yeah, you can detect magic. You can detect magic at will. Right. So I'm gonna do that. 
so you detect magic low key. Your eye like glows a little bit, but you don't like stare at her, so she doesn't notice. Um, first of all, this entire room is magic as heck. It glows right. because she has created like a pocket house inside of her house. There's a couple of spells that work like this, like Liam Mid's tiny hut and stuff. She's done a little bit of custom work on it, but like this place is uh, all magic essentially. Um, you don't, I mean, you definitely see spell residue. She was basically like, she was stirring soup with magic. She like changed her hair with magic. She plucked her eyebrows with magic. She put her shoes on with magic. Like she, you get the feeling she actually doesn't do much that doesn't involve magic, frankly, but you do not see like the same exact spell. Okay. You saw at Tarsus. That's what I wanted to know. Uh, she says, is that helpful? Did I solve it? Did I crack the case? Not yet. Oh, dang. I mean, how did the ghost hurt you? Uh, I mean, normally ghosts aren't able to really touch or affect people directly, right? I mean, I'm not a ghost expert. Don't they sometimes knock on stuff and, like, leave messages and mirrors, like, backwards? I don't know. So my illusions, I don't know if you can see, but I, like, make real stuff out of fake stuff and, like, fake stuff out of real stuff. I, so I was trying to make the ghost, like, solid. I, it's hard to explain, but uh, I made him solid, and he scratched me with... The, it was like a it was a drake, which is like a quadrupedal, like, dragons without wings, but, like, dog-sized, mm-hmm, big mm-hmm. claws. And mm-hmm. he, like, was, he got spooked because he, he was like, oh, I'm suddenly material, and he, scr- he scratched me. How would you make a drake uh, ghost material? What would you use to do that? Oh, I mean, it's, it's a custom spell of mine. Uh, it's a kind of... Uh, So the kind of illusion magic I do isn't strictly, what's the word, legal? From the sound of it, if I were to guess, it sounds like that you take aspects or traits of a physical object that you're possessing and then transplant some of those properties somewhere else to create a fake object or a surrogate object. Something, something, conservation of mass, something, something, heresy, something, blasphemy, something should not be, something beyond the realms of mortal ken. So you would need something possibly with, like, I don't know, scales, like a a drake would have in order to manifest the drake into existence? Uh, That might be one way to do it. I just kind of supplemented it with my own, like, energy. Like, so when you soul bond... Like, I gave it some of my materialness. Does that make sense? Like, we we were soul buddies for a second. Hmm. And, I, and I gave him a little bit of my juice to make him a little bit more pettable. And this Drake doesn't exist anymore, I take it, from what you're saying. Oh, uh, I mean, when he scratched me, it, we broke the link. He didn't like it. And so he went back to ghosting. He's out there. <sighs> okay. Just doing his cool ghost stuff. The main thing here is that the, the robbery, and it specifically occurred at a, a Tarsus, and it happened throughout with some, involving some item that carried some residual magic to it. Uh-huh. So we're simply trying to figure out where the item might have gone, and given, at the very least, your, your insight into the machinations of fate, it seemed like you might be able to provide some information about what it could be tied to. Would it help if I described the object? Maybe would that would guide your cards? Heck yeah. If you guys want to do some, some readings, I can do some reading. Now, this isn't Sylvia's voice. This is Austin's voice. Mm. Zoe, you, you take a sip on soup, and it is not mayo It's just soup. She's going to start like eating a shit ton of soup really quickly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Almost dangerously so, because she's like tasting something that's not mayonnaise for the first time. Yeah, and Dora, you have to detect magic vision on, so you can like look over at Zoe, who's becoming a whirlwind of chili, and you can see just kind of like the the chili is like vaguely magical. You don't know exactly what all that's about. Hey, Sylvia. Hi. Did you put magic in the chili? Yeah, I I add magic to everything. It, <laughs> it gives it that extra kick. What kind of magic? It's not a it's not illusions. It's real. It's real herbs and spices. Just. Magic herbs and spices. Oh. Merbs and mices. <laughs> okay. Trademark TM, trademark TM. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib, Sylvia. Hell yeah, my jib is tight. Yeah, it is. <laughs> my jib my jib is fresh to death. What's up? <laughs> um so okay. So I uh, I guess Roland you describe the salamander sheath to her? Mm-hmm. 
and she uh, mixes up some cards and stuff. And she says, uh, so I don't do this the way a lot of fortune tellers do it because I'm not uh, just letting fate guide these. I'm actually, I'm actualizing like the flow of the universe here. So it's my like real to unreal, unreal to real magic here. Hmm. I don't know if you, you're interested or you care. That's why I, I thought there would be five of you because I woke up this morning, I checked and now there's three. So nothing's fixed. Not, t- space is warped and time is bendable. But there's there's a part of time and fate itself that you tap into in order to do these readings. So it's not merely reading what fate is saying. It's sort of getting in touch with it. Yeah, I just want you. I just wanted to. Let, I just full full disclosure. I I I I consider myself fully disclosed. All right. So I'm Austin is going to roll a D. Uh, the 22 major arcana, and I, I'm going to roll a d22, I guess? It's slash r space d22. Okay, slash r space d22. <gasps> I did it! Oh, you did it! Yes. Thank you. All right, so 10, which would be actually... Well, in this case, then, you know, so yeah, it would be 9 then, right? So 9, which is the hermit. Ooh. Purple hermit? <laughs> hermit purple yeah that's where we are right now guys hmm. sweet uh, tarot can be literal or it could be figurative so it could be someone who like literally is a hermit or it could be something about wanting to be spiritually or emotionally isolated hmm. alice that's what i thought too right off the top of my head yeah that's a very good thought so okay, I don't know who this Alice is. Do you want me to guys go? Do you want me to go with you guys, or are you just gonna go on this cool adventure? I'm just trying to think here. There's no need to pull up any other cards. That one card should be sufficient for. Yeah, there's more complicated ways to do this, but I just kind of actualized. Yeah. The not real thing, which is like the person you need. Right. And that's how it manifested. So he's gonna interrupt and cast a message, which I'm now head canoning to be. She just gives finger guns to somebody. And the message goes across. Oh, God, it's back. Yeah. I don't know what they mean, but I like them. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she's just going to like send a message to uh, Sylvia that says, this chili is baller. <laughs> Can I have seconds? Uh, <laughs> she does um, some uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice stuff and gets like uh, household items to like magically bring it. Like a, a sofa floats over like with a bowl <laughs> and like gives it to you. <laughs> She doesn't stand unless she has to. <laughs> Am I supposed to tip the sofa waiter? Pet him. <laughs> I'm going to try to distinguish where the belly on the sofa waiter would be to give it scratches. So you pet the sofa, which is just a good <laughs> sentence that I just am glad we have on tape. Um, so what do you guys want to do? Which is a question I ask every episode infinity times. If we're thinking of Alice's the hermit, we could pay her a visit. I hope things have settled down since the last time we went there. All right. Hopefully she might have some information. I doubt that she would know much about what we're looking for, though, since she rarely leaves the house, if at all. I don't think she's ever left, as far as I know. Yeah, she really doesn't want to, if you know her at all. If you wish to come with us, Sylvia... You're welcome to, though, when we get to where we're going to, you might not be allowed inside, given how, given what happened at the last party that they threw. I don't know anything about nothing, so if there's a chance that something cool might happen, I guess I want to see it. I'm just, I'm just a leaf on the wind, dude. And speaking of wind, <laughs> you might want to uh, make sure to take out your finest hat. It might be raining a bit outside. Yeah. I right, see so you guys are going to suit up. Yes. After pouring down as much chili as possible in the <laughs> shortest amount of time. Nice. Um, so you guys all uh, gear up to uh, go over to Hawthorne House, where you think you might be being magically led to further your investigation. Mm-hmm. But as you leave the house, there is a lightning strike from <laughs> Zoe's storm. I guess dexterity saving throws everybody. Uh oh. With plus fours because of the aura. Mm hmm. 20. 19. Uh, d- 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 14. Uh, so lightning just uh, strikes basically as soon as you guys get outside the door, and Roland, with his holy aura of helping, 
subtly influences everybody not to get reduced to ash, which is good. That's a good first step, Mm -hmm. not being reduced to ash. But you notice that the the thunderstorm, basically, the cloud is this, like, like this is no longer a personal rain cloud. This is, like, there's a storm now. And uh, it is not, like, alive and chasing you, but it is getting worse in an unavoidable way, which is going to make traveling with it dangerous going forward. So that's something to be aware of. Maybe I should just go someplace else. So uh, why I try to get rid of it doesn't disrupt anything else we're trying to do. Feel that's best, Zoe. You you can. I don't think we should split up with zombies on the on the prowl. Sylvia says. So this is like a magic thing. Did you get cursed? What's up? When she does more magic. I mean, when she does magic, then more magic happens. And so she did some magic, and then now the sky is angry. Hell yeah, extra magic. Magic on magic on magic on magic. So wild magic. Most of the time, it just goes away after a while. Okay, so you're just waiting this, you're waiting this thing out? Uh, I think she will, but at a considerable distance behind everyone else. Okay, oh, this is so sad. Um, so as you guys are approaching Hawthorne House, you notice, uh, like from quite a distance away that it's not just patrolled by skeletons. There's like a skeleton army is a strong word. Platoon? Militia? There's a lot. Like there's a lot, a lot. And they're like outside, like too deep. There's zero chance of stealth right now. And they're all armed. And I mean, they don't have facial expressions, but they have a very like, uh, on alert posture to them. And they do not welcome you warmly. Roland, uh, Roland tries to walk ahead of the rest of the group and just sort of has his hands up in a manner that is you know, meant to be non-threatening. Uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing to be alert about. Uh, you all, we just, I, I just need to speak with Mrs. Hawthorne for a little bit. All right, and I mean, as you approach them, they don't respond to you. They are not capable of speech, but they level their spears at you and basically give the impression that they're not going to let you pass. If you insist on getting closer, they will try to push you back at spear point, but they're not going to, like... Outright attack. Yeah, they're not going to murder you, but they're not going to let you pass, and then their resistance will be proportional to your insistence. Why are these skeletons being so hostile? I They weren't like this the last time I was here. Yeah, and Sylvia speaks up. She says, well, that's a good sign. If something is new and different, that means something's going on. That seems like a pretty good, strong investigation start. And also, like, the ambient magic here is, like, bananas. It's, it's like, this place is crazy magic. And, like, you, there is, a, like, a good ghost yield here. Like, if you remember, if you were in the sacrum, it was, like, ghosts were coming in during your conversations. And, you know, like ghosts hang out around Tarsus and like here's another place like everywhere that's like really magical mm-hmm. ghosts hang out at and this is one of them there's just like a constant like slowly eddying current of them around you at all times mm-hmm. yeah this is where the ghosts originally came from Sylvia yeah yeah it's also my fault my bad or not bad depends on how you see it I want to try something but I don't want it to be disruptive to what your ultimate goal is my ultimate goal is for things to get as rowdy as possible. Okay. So I imagine if it seems like they're like keeping rolling from trying to get in, mm-hmm. uh, Zoe might just attempt to do essentially what she did the first time, where she like tries to sneak through the fence and then misty step into the house. Okay. So the skeletons are too deep all around the house. So you could misty step past them, but they would probably see you because you would be like only 30 feet away. This is this is workable. I mean, it's just going to be a little different than last time. Well, the, I I have an idea on what to do. Okay, and I feel bad because I'm about to like just throw a hundred wild magics at you. Mm-hmm. So I want to try essentially go look into the the lawn and find like a stretch that, if cleared, would give like a good vantage point to get into the house with. Because I have a way to clear it. Okay, so let's work under the assumption that you can do this. I want to spot like a good vantage point that I feel like if it was free, I can get into the house. And then on that vantage point, I want to cast Wind Wall. Uh huh. Which is that spell that I learned from Wild Magic that essentially creates a wall 50 feet long, 15 feet high, and one foot thick of just ridiculous powered wind that knocks things over. So you want to teleport into the yard and then create a wind wall so they can't chase you? 
Yeah, or, or basically create it so it gives me an opening that I can then use to teleport into the house. Yeah. So, okay, hold on. So teleport, wind wall teleport, or teleport? What's the order of operations? I was going to say, like, wind wall from outside, because it has a range of 120 feet. Okay. And then teleport, teleport, if need be. So to be clear, you want to, like, nuke the skeletons with your wind wall? Uh, well, it's, it's going to blow them away. It won't kill them. It'll, you know, yeah, break them apart or whatever. But I just want to be clear that there's, like, an offensive component to this. Uh... You know, <laughs> unintentionally, but yeah. Okay, so we can definitely do that. All right, so you're going to wind wall 50 feet of skeletons, and then in the confusion, teleport behind them? Yeah. I I, I, I noted that I, I was worried that this would fuck things up, so if anyone has an idea that doesn't hose things over as much as this, feel free to, to interject. Oh, no, I'm ready. So do you say anything cool before you do this? Because like, this is your big Mission Impossible infiltration scene. Come on, do a stupid pod. God. You can do it. It uh, feels like a storm's a brewing. I don't know. I'm not good at puns. You need to do one for me. <laughs> anyway, here's Winderwall. You know, something like that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know? Come on. Come on. All right. So I'm not going to roll 50 times for all the skeletons to save. What happens is Zoe I, runs towards the gate to cast the spell Windwall, and in the confusion, she blasts apart a ton of skeletons and creates this roaring wall of wind and then teleports through it. She's going to do two magic rolls. And while Chris gets that ready, I want to point out to Theodora that a lot of magic's happening. Are you interested in seeing that magic? I am. Uh, because when you do your Eldritch Sight, is it? Yes. You notice that when Zoe teleports away, uh, she leaves behind a magical residue and where she appears on the other side of the fence, she leaves behind magical residue again. And this one spell created these two spots, and they look very familiar. Ah! <laughs> uh, so is that a 7 and an 18 there? That is a 7 and an 18 on my magic, uh, wild magic. Let's see how much worse it can get. I, I hazard to think it could get worse, but who knows? You have the polka, you have the wind. The thunder cloud above you just erupts in thunder and lightning and starts spreading across the sky as if emboldened and infused by your flurry of magic. The polka music reaches like a fever pitch and you feel a shooting pain in your lower back. Um, and that's one thing that happens to you that you're not immediately aware of why. And the other thing that happens to you is your skin feels weirdly itchy. All right. These are two distinct things that have just happened to you. And I get and so you land in the yard having Misty stepped, and I guess you're just gonna run into the house. Yeah, I think so. Alright. Because I've cleared the way. Yeah. No, the skeletons are very preoccupied. And as you burst into the house, you notice that like there's no skeletons in here because they're all busy outside for now, although there are some ghosts. And you take a minute to take stock of yourself, because you just inflicted two more wild magic things on yourself. Here's the rundown. A, you're no longer blaring polka music. <gasps> Phew! B, uh, the thunderstorm is now above... It just seems to have taken on a life of its own and is now just above the town. Okay. C, and this is the first of your new rolls, where it hurt badly on your lower back, you kind of like look back there, and you have a tail. Okay. And D, are we on D? Chris, your character, uh, you just, so you just open and close the door, and you notice the door handle is melted where you touched it. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> holy Christ, outside, you guys have just found yourself in the middle of a skeleton riot. How is that? Bony. I like to think Zoe's gonna open up the door, she's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you melt the handle right off. <laughs> All right. So I guess we have to switch back to Bumbershoot for one last thing before we call it quits for the week. Mm -hmm. uh, Bumbershoot just sort of like uh, walks hesitantly towards him. <laughs> and so as everybody else leaves, um, Warden Light's expression changes. And it's a little bit hard to read. He's not a very expressive person. But... You can tell there's a, a seriousness has come over him. And he says, I've made it no secret, Brother Victrola, that you and I do not see eye to eye. But today, in particular, 
you come into my presence with not just a dark aura, but two. And I would have you explain yourself. Bumbershoot can't lie in front of him, right? It won't work. Um, <laughs> yeah. It, like, literally won't. You know that, and also I guess now Max knows that, and he starts to panic in your mind <laughs> because he is also a crime boy. Okay. You guys are both crime boys in this body. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, Bumbershoot, like, throws himself on the mercy of the court and says, There's a ghost inside of me. <laughs> Use your exorcism powers and get it out of me, please. <laughs> that is all true because it has to be. <laughs> I guess that's one strategy. <laughs> yeah um so i mean in your mind max is panicking because uh he did dark necromancy and he knows that you were sent there to capture him he's wanted it's the necromancer i was just reminded of that because it is also thinking of that <laughs> <laughs> all right so i mean you've basically confessed um and so putting max in danger yeah. means that max is going to put you in danger and he says let's do it Yes, it's me, but this man tried to kill my wife, and I i know he's killed many more since he's been here. At least one a week. Every week. Bumbershoot snaps his fingers and says, whatever. <laughs> the whatever defense. I'm sorry, but let's, let's be real here, Angel. You knew who I was, and you knew what vampires need. You asked for my help anyway. That's true. I can't deny some culpability in your continued existence in this town, mm -hmm. but justice, justice is a heavy sword, and I do not wield it lightly, Brother Victrola, but you have worn out your welcome here. Well, then send me out of town. Were that I could. If it were in my power, I would send you as far away as you could possibly go, to a plane perhaps more to your liking. But alas, we are all stuck here. Trapped forever. So you're going to take this ghost out of me or what? <laughs> as, you, as you say that, you hear behind you uh, the sound of metal on metal. And I think you turn and you look and you see that chains are beginning to creep over the front door of the sacrum. Like vines, like kudzu from nothing, uh, magically summoned, blocking your path out of the tower. All right, um, Bumbershoot sort of gets the impression that this isn't going to go the way he wants it to. Uh, and he says, um, is that a yes or a no? <laughs> I will give you more mercy than you deserve, Brother Victrola. We are all trapped in this prison, but there are more prisons inside. And I have one for you. And maybe it will give you some time to reflect on your deeds. Bumbershoot, like, knows he's beat. Uh, so... He kind of gives up. He's 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 not gonna he's not gonna fight it out because he knows he'll die. So he just sort of like puts his hands open, like you know, like you can shackle me or whatever, and he's done. Part of me thinks that would Max take this lying down, but also he knows he knows what you know, and you know Warden Light is basically unbeatable with your civilian weapon, yeah. and also that given your cowardly nature i think you would probably sandbag and attempt, attempt to fight right like you would just throw yourself on the ground if max tried to rush forward yeah and since max is thinking this a uh, bumper shoot um thinks should have let me take the dragon thing and i could have actually won this fight but no you had to save your wife <laughs> yes and i do it again by the way <laughs> yeah she's not even your wife anymore have you even thought about that it's death to you part she's your ex-wife <laughs> is that really what you want your last words to be max says <laughs> quibbling over legal formalities um Bumshoot says fuck you phantom <laughs> okay um as you sit there arguing with yourself inside your own head warden light just uh kind of stands there with a strange expression on his face like kind of like melancholy as more chains begin to be summoned around you and begin to bind you and behind him uh the locked door in the back of this ground floor unlocks and opens and bumbershoot von victrola begins to be dragged behind that door okay as this is happening bumbershoot says pineapple <gasps> fuck <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> God damn it, Leon, I love you. Mm -hmm. Um, It's your boy, Winnie. What's up? I'm being dragged to hell by the warden. Tell the rest. Um, As you do that, um, that's all psychic. So that's fine. 
Uh, as you are dragged behind the door, uh, Warden Light watches you go, and as soon as you get behind it, uh, it slams, and you are cut off from Winifred, but your message gets through. Do you have any final thoughts before you are dragged off to God knows where? Literally? Bumbershoot. Is is the the ghost is still inside Bumbershoot? Like, yes. They're both getting dragged into this. Okay, Bumbershoot says, This is all your fault. I take no responsibility for any of this. I was just doing what vampires do. You were being a dick. <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe Max says, I can't believe I'm going to be trapped in here with you for all eternity. This is worse than being dead. This is like double hell. Then I will take some solace that I've grabbed you with me. Oh, man, you really are a monster to the end, aren't you, Bumbershoot? Thousands of victims can't be wrong. As always, I'd like to thank Overclock Remix for our music, which includes arrangements of Acoustic Jam at the Lucifer Alpha, an arrangement of Biohazard from Snatcher, Simply Be Grooved, an arrangement of Simple and Clean from Kingdom Hearts, and Poka Center, an arrangement of Pokemon Center from Pokemon. Executive producers for the month of May 2017 are Kirsten Haslinger, Accelerus, Joseph Timbrello, Jade, The Cult of Gorfanax, Irving Royale, Andrew Grothen, Paul Mullen, Finch DeYoung, Arjun De Koning, Luke Powers, Michael Goodell, Brent, Tarka, Melissa Nielsen, Shyness, Dennis Pancake Detlefsen, Riptor Stormwolf, Miko from Finland, Dennis Bangston, Josh Mosier, Indigo Van Dane, James Bevan, Allison Ansel, Sydney Marsing, Just a Jester, John Potts, Kevin Dobbins, Savard and Akrasimova, Carl, Brady Warner, Kitty Foe, James Neely, Eugene T, Marissa Donaldson, Melanie Joe, Lana Seawolf, Toby Gleason Stack, Ruby Offer, Matthew Weber, Sarah Hanley, Melissa Booker, Cameron Abbas, Dylan, Gary Sayan, Anna Stuhlfarer, Sean, the host of Funk Dunk, Giorgio Renna, Harrison Andrew, Kevin Sidlow, Christopher Charlo, Jorit, Vigor Arnston, Cody Jackson, August Rue, Athos, and Ingmar Gremen. If you want to join this list, you can support the show at patreon.com slash austinyorski, and you can also support Leon at patreon.com slash renegadecut, and you can find Chris at patreon.com slash recap. And you can find our new player, Laura Kate Dale, at patreon.com slash Buzz. There are other ways to support the show, too. As you can find us on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and probably other places, and like, comment, and subscribe there. Your support helps to make the show grow, and your enthusiasm helps to encourage us to make bad decisions. Because, because the audience will be like, "Oh, when's Bumbershoot coming back?" And he's totally not. It's up to it's up to it's up to you. It's your show, but like, I'm I'm just letting you know because I have precognition about co- comments, and one of them will be, "Oh, Bumbershoot's coming back later this season." I do. I am also dreading the the torrent of comments, the barrage. It's absolutely happening. I mean, this isn't scripted. If you want to, like, draw your sword and stab him, he'll fight back. I guess it's up to you.